I naturally been. saw something in y'all, a gift. I'm drawn to you mm -hmm. all. And uh, I've just been watching y'all. And y'all singing to be able to sing the song. Started from the bottom, now we <laughs> here. Yeah. Like to take your laptop and do that and to grow it into one, two, three cameras, three light setups, one, two, three, four, staff people. Come on. going on YouTube it's Kevin and Mikkel we are back with a new video um, I want to start this video all by asking you guys to please click that thumbs up button which is right below this video and make sure that you share this video on Facebook Twitter Tumblr or wherever else you share a video or whatever blog site you go to put our video on there and tell them to get into the scorpion show um, as you guys know the scorpion show has been on its grind lately so I know you guys were missing the gossiping videos but I want to give a shout out to everybody who watched our interviews over the past week you know we interviewed Bridget Kelly and we also interviewed uh, Gogo Morrow last Thursday just thank you to everyone who watched those videos and actually got into it I know our audience is not too big on watching us interview but thank you to those who really took the time out their day to watch it and if you still didn't watch it you had time to watch those interviews and get to know those artists the thing is we want to bring everybody to the scorpion show not just singers we want to bring musicians we want to bring directors we want to bring everybody to the show but i don't feel like i mean i don't want to turn people down from coming on the scorpion show because i know y'all not going to watch so, you know, my thing is this. I'm just going to bring everybody on the Scorpion Show that want to come on the Scorpion Show that's actually doing something. So, you know, if you're really about something and you really make a name for yourself, just email us and we'll consult. You know, I'll consult with the other judge and we'll see if we're going to have you on our show. So, um, people, I don't know why people act like they don't know where we've been. Like, like we've been going a long time. We have not been in. We've is been on YouTube. Going? Yes, it is. Don't do it. <laughs> No. Yes. Where'd you get that? I bought it last Friday. I was feeling so good after we seen Michelle and Fela. I was just having a good time with bringing the dinners. And if y'all did, they didn't convince you to buy that. No, they didn't convince me. I bought it myself because oh. I've smoked hookah plenty of times. Oh. So you know, is that I, why you're losing weight so fast? Oh, oh no, 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 no. It's just I've been working my ass out. You know, your ass has been worked out. Yes, and and my ass is really hurting. But I must say, it's tough. Because even though I'm losing the weight, you know, it's like my stomach is going down. It's like it's going down gradually. Mm -hmm. But I want it, like, if, if I'm losing all this weight, I want it to show here, too. It's mm -hmm. showing, but it's not showing as much as I like to. What, are you doing, like, crutches and stuff? I'm doing, we doing, all, oh, my God, all the exercises is basically working on the core. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like, it's tough, but it's getting there. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to have to do a second round of insanity. I know it's not going to just be one round. So I'm going to have to do it again. But I, to those that really stick to it, you know, you will see the results. You are responsible for everything you put in your body, okay? If they ain't put a gun to your head, don't blame, don't blame nobody else. You're responsible for what you put in your mouth and in your body, you know, so. But I'm enjoying it. I am, I went to Atlanta and I'm gaining a couple pounds. So I'm working on getting that off, but I'm back at 223. But my lowest point on insanity so far is 221 pounds. And that's starting from 239 pounds. 
So you got to do the work if you want to see the results. And even if you don't do insanity, take your ass to the gym. Let me tell you, I sit on the computer. I can sit on the computer a good two hours tweeting, Facebook, and maybe looking at something I shouldn't be looking at. You know, and no time go by like that. But then when you want to exercise, you look at the time, it's 45 minutes, you're like, oh, bitch, I can't do it. Yes, you can do it. Get your ass up and do it. Turn the scoop and show off and exercise right now. You ain't going to do it. But anyway, it's just it's just good to be, you know, it's good to be back. Um, what else have we been doing? We actually, we had a chance to meet uh, Seven Streeter. We had went to an um, event with her being, being here in Philly. I'm a little bit disappointed with it because I feel her turnout could have been greater. You know, but, you know, I still enjoy the event. And, you know, her being a new artist, sometimes you're going to get an event where you perform in front of a thousand people. Sometimes it'll be in front of 30 people. This time happened to be 30 people. But, you know... She still had a good time, and she was really, really nice. And I told her, yeah, girl, we're going to get you on the Scorpion Show in the future. So if Chris Brown will have a problem with it, we're going to have her on the show. And then while we was doing that, we were introduced. I mean, we were asked to host a Philly event here for Olympus is Fallen, which is in theaters now. And y'all got to go see that movie because, again, I'm not big on action movies. I hate action movies. I hate, I hate blood, like blood, 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 and all that gory shit. I don't like it. But the movie was really good, and we were asked to host it, you know, introduce the uh, movie to the crowd, even though it was a tough crowd. Shout out to Philadelphia, you know. I think it was because they made them sit in the chair and wait too long for the movie to start. But it was just something, you know, it's something new for us. So I'm just really, really, really excited. And also we did interview Michelle Williams, and people are wondering, where the fuck is that interview? Well, I tell y'all, Michelle actually wanted to see some clips on the interview first, and she has the right to do that before we just, you know, throw it on out there. So, I'm giving her a chance to review it, and then the video should be up sometime this weekend. And when we put that video up... I didn't know that. Yeah, I I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to, you yeah. know, tell you. You know, I always find out things like <laughs> I just come to... to see, I, I did not know that. It's so... Because, you know, what's so funny was that I actually planned on coming here today and asking him about that interview. And then I didn't even know that. But thanks for telling me. You're welcome. So, <laughs> it's tough. Okay, let me tell you. It's tough, okay? I, I'm juggling so much. I'm juggling a lot. So, I mean, I did, I really do need to work on telling Mikael. Yeah, because I am I really, sitting here next to you. That's something I really need to do. And I've been I, sitting here next to you for five years. <laughs> It's hard, damn it. And I, Let me right. tell you, you. Believe you me, you are not the only one in those interviews. See, through insanity, through we got to <laughs> go here, we got to go there, trying to get some video games in. It's tough. And my Rosetta Stone, I've really, really been getting my Spanish in, too. Chase Clinton so, so something in Spanish, a que hora? What does that mean? What time is it? Oh, wait, I don't know. <laughs> no, que hora es? Que hora es? Excuse me. Que hora es? What time is it? No, six, Let me see what time six, is it. Son las, son las seis. Son las seis y media. No, son las seis de la... Come on, de la, come on, come on, de la, de come la on noche. with the no, no. Son las seis de la noche. noche. No, no. I got it, I got it. You've been on the computer for two hours. You should know it. Tell me some no. Son las seis... No, no, no. Que la... No, que la... Contelo Taco Bell. Come on, tell me what time it is. Taco Bell. La computadora está sobre la mesa. Come on with the dumb shit. Come on, let's just get in with the video. So let's start the show. Come on. We um, need to invest in chairs that don't move. Yeah, okay. No. Yes. Okay, because you well, are like <laughs> like this. And I'm, then I'm trying to stay still, but this chair oh, keeps I'm swiveling. Sorry. I'm sorry. I like to swing sometimes. Yeah, well. It helps me with my obliques. With the, you squeeze in your core and go like this. Go like that. And let's start. No, because there's nothing wrong with my obliques. Last. You know, it's starting to get there a little bit. No, you mine know. is actually going down. So oh, okay, that's good. You know, so anyway. You know, she's just bitch trying it. <laughs> Wait till the time I come. This bitch going to be a skinny bitch. Girl. Who, me? Be, no, me. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they won't be able to tell you nothing. Okay, watch when I walk on that beach in um, Puerto Rico. Mm-mm. I need to stop before I start fucking up. Before I, everybody tell me I look too good. Then I'll be like, child, bye. So bow down. Girl, y'all already know how I feel about Bow Down, but y'all haven't seen Mikkel's tweets, and everyone is like, girl, the jury wants to know what does Mikkel think. Fuck what you think, bitch. What do Mikkel <laughs> think? So, bam, there you go. And don't don't fuck this up for this interview now. <laughs> <laughs> See how Brandy kept it cute, okay? And you, <laughs> you, um, <laughs> you tried <laughs> <laughs> Remember what you uh, been told you. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's like now. No, <laughs> I, I, and this is in all honesty. 
I have not heard the entire song of Bow Down. Has anybody heard it? Is there an entire song to it? I heard the whole Bow Down I've been on. I don't know. See, they're two different songs, but I heard this whole thing. Okay. All right. Now, so, I have not heard I've Been Down or I've Been On. I have not heard that at all. And I've only heard about 30 to 40 seconds of Bow Down when it was first put out. My personal opinion, I'm not really too... I'm not really... That particular song doesn't really do anything for me. Like, it's not one of those songs that I can see me getting in the car and wanting to listen to. Um, the whole Keisha Cole thing, um, not even just Keisha Cole, just people taking that song and just turning it into something that it totally didn't need to be turned into. Mm -hmm. You could ask me to do that. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I wanted you to keep talking. Yeah, but when you get in front of me like that. <laughs> you know. Um, the whole Keisha Cole and people taking the song and turning it into something else. I'm not. I'm, I'm not too big on the song, but I think that what Keisha Cole failed to realize, along with a lot of other people, they failed to realize is that Beyonce wasn't being literal when she was telling, calling, if oh it, it, uh, calling females bitches and things like that. What she was saying was telling her haters and the people who have been hating on her for the past umpteen years that she's been out there to bow down, whether it be a man or a woman, whomever it was that's been hating on her for years. I think it's quite interesting to me. The reason why I didn't talk about it on Twitter or anything, because I just, I, I really laughed it off. And yesterday, two of my cousins, who are big fans of the Scorpion Show, um, one of them, which... Yes, your cousin, is, right? yeah, We talked about it, and we just thought it was just so funny how... People will glorify songs that have the word bitches, and females will run in a club when a song says, that's my down ass bitch, and be going. But then when Beyonce comes out and says, bow down bitches, everybody's like, oh, how dare you say that? You're supposed to be this, that, and the third. With, and taking it, like, to the extreme. Like, I saw some post on Instagram where people were saying, oh, I don't bow down to any human. I bow down to Jesus. And I'm thinking, like, hard. Yeah, but that's but that wasn't Beyonce's message in the song was not bow down to me. It was basically mm -hmm. to all the people who have been criticizing her for years. It, it but just, she already got a song like that, and you know. Yeah, but see, like, that's another thing that kind of confused me too, because Beyonce has songs like Diva and a little bit of I Eva, take who no kind of echo mm -hmm. bow down's message. But I guess because she used the word bitches, people kind of just yeah. Think, I just, oh, how could you yes, use that term? Cool. And then somebody said something to the effect of. Oh, how could you be friends and just sing at the inauguration for President Obama, but yet you're singing about on bitches? But let's not forget that President Obama has said in the past, and actually has said it frequently, that he's a huge fan of Jay-Z's. So I'm sure President Obama has heard some of Jay-Z's lyrics and his songs. 99 Problems with a Bitch Ain't One. Actually, Jay-Z and President... <laughs> actually, to be quite... Let me just take y'all mm -hmm. back a few... President Obama met Jay-Z back in 2007 because he and Jay-Z actually had a mutual friend and President Obama was the one who actually wanted to meet Jay-Z and he said for a very long time that he's a huge fan of Jay-Z's. So, to kind of think that someone being a fan of Jay-Z's and not listening to the lyrics that Jay-Z has said for the past 20 years and then you guys go all up in arms because Beyonce says bow down. Did you not forget that Jay-Z had a song called 99 Problems but a bitch ain't one? Did you not forget how Jay-Z, some of his earlier lyrics, but yet everybody's going crazy because Beyonce said bow down bitches like it just it was ridiculous I guarantee you that Beyonce saying bow down bitches did not break her relationship with the Obamas okay I guarantee you that just like Jay-Z saying I got 99 problems with a bitch ain't one did not break his relationship with President Obama it doesn't it didn't affect that like come on people like, it's just you know it's just silly it's just really really silly Beyonce is too fucking point blank Beyonce is too grown for that kind of song Beyonce you did your songs in your 20s but Beyonce wait you got hold your on. songs Wait, you hold on, hold on, because you made a whole video. I sure did. Well, this is my turn. Oh, no, I thought you was finished. No, I'm not finished. No, I'm not finished, 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 finished because up. you had a whole video. Oh, I'll finish up. Finish, finish up. Finish. Yeah, Beyonce may be thing. too grown, but Beyonce was also grown when she uh -huh. came out with Diva. Uh -huh. She was also no, 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 no. grown. She, excuse me. No, I was so, no, excuse no, me. I'm talking. not finished. Don't count what I'm I said. Because you said it. No, but no. You said it. You said it. So you wasn't finished. Go ahead. I mean, let me talk. Yeah, you had a whole video. Okay. And you got a lot of views on it. Yes, we had a great discussion. Okay, well then let the girls find enough. But what did you say at the beginning of this video? What? The jury wanted to hear what who had to say. Oh, okay, well then let me say it. got topic shit, America. Let me say it. Oh, now you want to hear about America Island. Oh, now you want me to hurry up. Oh, no, no, Because you no. got something to say. No, I don't have, I just want to just go ahead. Now, didn't, you have, didn't he have a whole video where he talked? No, I didn't no. see nothing on Twitter. Uh, it's uh, nothing. 
topic. I kept mum. Because he know that song wasn't supposed to be out. That's why he ain't say nothing. No, I didn't say anything because I didn't. Do, first of all, I didn't even. I don't even care for the song, right, so I really right. didn't care too much about right. that. I just thought that it was silly right, that I people say nothing, no. jumped up on it. You made it. You said Beyonce's too grown for that, but she was also grown when she did Diva. She was also grown when she when she did Ego. Those songs echo. I actually, when you think about it, if you put Diva and, and and Ego together, it makes Bow Down. Except for Bow Down has the word bitch in it. Those two songs are Bow Down, and so therefore, I don't. I think the main people's main problem with Bow Down, if you think about it, is the word bitch. You don't hear anybody else talking about anything about Bow Down other than the fact that she says Bow Down bitches. People are all up in arms. How can you say that word? How can you do that? But you got to remember, at the end of the day, people for years have been wanting Beyonce to be real. They wanted her to be more real life. They wanted her to emulate what other, what other artists and singers are doing out there. Then when she does it, then we criticize her for doing it. When she doesn't do it, then, oh, Beyonce, you're still being fake. You're still not showing us the real you. And then when she comes out and says, bow down, bitches, then everybody's like, oh, how dare you say that you're too grown to be saying stuff like that. Well, which one is it? Do you want her to be like the other artists, or do you want her to still be fake? I need to know. That's why I didn't comment on it. Now, next topic, because this I is my know. moment to say I needed to say. You had a whole video no, no. where you know. Go ahead. I'm going to counteract. Go ahead. The counteraction of what I said. Now, when you well, look actually, on, I didn't hear what you said. Oh, I didn't watch oh, no, your no, video. No, 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 I didn't hear what you said. You commented on it. Okay. So, anyway, my thing is this. Beyonce now, she don't have to be like all the other artists. My thing was when I said, I want to see a fun Beyonce, I want to see the non rehearsed. Beyonce with the same old interviews, with the same old videos of her being a kid. The Beyonce that I've seen lately that was like, like to have fun. I've seen some of her Instagram pictures, but she was like, gone with the wind, fabulous. Like, you don't ever hear Beyonce talk like that and have fun because she's always so damn serious. I just want to see the fun side of Beyonce. Now, a song like Bow Down Bitches, that's not a fun song for me. I think that, like, Girl, what? The Halo singer is now telling people to bow down, bitch. You go from them classic type songs like from four to bow down, bitch. Like, what? Like, what's going on? You know, like, I'm trying to find out where Beyonce is going musically. And right now it's like, girl, I want to know what's going on with the album. Are you not going to release the album? Are you just going to go on tour and... Just do an album of your song, I mean, a tour of your songs that you previously released because something in the water ain't right. I, I'm trying to tell y'all. What does that have to do with Bow Listen, down? listen. Because I'm, I'm done talking about Bow Down. But what I'm saying is something in the water. I thought you, and, wait a minute. Wait, hold I, on. I don't mean, I, wait, I don't mean oh, to be rude. I'm but I thought you were counteracting, but you're I making it But then I'm going Because I thought you were counteracting to what I said. Oh, now you know we go off as Yeah, but you're talking about now. the album. Yeah, I'm now talking about the album. Think to Bow Down. Tell me how you feel about what I said about Bow Down. How you feel about Bow Down? Yeah. Well, you know, people. Who is that? Is that still a bill collector? They like express like bitch. Where you gonna pay this bill? Oh, I can pay it on YouTube. Child, they gotta wait. So, y'all should have gave me all that fucking credit limit. Shit, I've been buying This is why I don't get those store credit cards. Cause I will go crazy. But I paid them a lump sum in January, and now I gotta give them another. I love All right, go ahead. Right. So anyway, yeah, so what you were saying is, you know, they, they people do want to see the fun side. People do want to see Beyonce on robotic. Like, we want to see something different. I guarantee you, if she performs Bob Down at her tour, they, the girl's going to go off they stand. But stand. I don't think, but I don't think, now remember, remember, mm -hmm. I am a stand too. But I am one of those few stands that I'm, I'm not a big fan of that song. Mm -hmm. So please, people, remember, listen to me, because I know a lot of people don't listen to what I say. I'm not a huge fan of Bow Down. Excuse not me. at all. And you'll probably never hear me sing it. I probably, it'll probably take me a month or two before I actually learn the whole song. But I think is the way people reacted to that song, mm -hmm. to me, was a little bit benign or whatever. It just was too, it was too critical because I'm thinking like, okay... Why is it that Beyonce can't say bow down bitches? Why is it that Beyonce has to be put in this box as where as though, like you said, mm -hmm. you're don't, this classic singer. Yeah, don't fuck up you your say, music material. Yeah, but then but then people 
always complain and say, oh, Beyonce, you're just so boring. You need to give us those fun songs. And, th and then when she does give us those fun Wait. songs, then, oh, you're too old to be giving us those single ladies type of songs. You need to give us classic songs. And then when she gives us classic songs, then you're just too boring. Yeah. That's what people do. No, and I don't yeah. want people to say to me, oh, Mikkel, because y'all know that's what people do. That's what they do. All right, I don't want, we, we shouldn't go on and on. But you Whoa, know well, guess what? Go ahead. We weren't going to go on and yeah. on. You know why we weren't going to go on and on? Because you said that the people want to hear what I had to say. Yeah, they did. Then I said what I had to say, I and know. then you want to jump over. Oh, but oh, I don't Because he let me say what I need to say. Just he wanted to jump in. No, go ahead. Yeah, but look, one more thing. Something that would help Beyonce not look as boring is if she get on some um some sitcoms or whatever and, and do some comedic, comedic fun stuff. You know, something like that that can, you know, about, okay. But then she can't act, remember? Okay. People say, oh, but you but can't when it's act. But when it come to, look, well, y'all should be all right. She Beyonce can't wait for loser. She done sold millions of, um, made millions of money on movies with her non-acting ass. That's you right. know, especially with, oh, let me stop. But yeah, but she'll, she'll get better. She the more, look, the more she practiced, the more she'll get better. Just like me. I was bad when we used to do our interviews. I was terrible. But as we keep going, a bitch is getting better. So if Beyonce keeps acting, you never and then she me. keeps practicing. I never said that. No, I'm just saying. The, I'm just saying. The I'm, viewers said that. I'm, no, 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 no. But it's true. Like, they're like, well, bitch, where's Kevin? And I've seen it, and I've looked at it, and I start studying some interviews and stuff, and I'm getting better. So to say that, oh, she just, she'll never be a great actress, that's a lie. If she hired a good actor, I mean, a good acting coach, acting coach she'll be great. She'll be better. So let's move on. Speaking of controversial lyrics, people have been going crazy about Rick Ross putting the Molly in her girl drink and date raping her. So the main thing is not about the Molly. The main thing is about the date rape. And is he making it okay for people to go around date raping women? The way I see it, people singing about these Mollies and everything. People think it's cute to pop them and start sweating. Fuck that. I've seen. I don't know. I don't know exactly. What Molly do to people, but I've seen people on ecstasy, and I've seen people take cocaine. I've seen people do a lot of shit. Now, for me, if I already know the effects of it, I'm not even going to be risky and play with myself like that. Play with some fucking drugs like that, or, or sniffing cocaine. No, a bitch like me ain't going to do it. Now, have I dibbled and dabbled with marijuana? Yes, and from time to time, I still do. Do I drink? Yes, I love to have me a drink. The effect of having a drink just makes me happy, have a good time. Marijuana, child, it can make me miserable or it could just make me have a good time. Something like cocaine, where your face start changing, your teeth fall out, and you fiend for it, you scratch, uh-uh, bitch. And ecstasy, I've seen people go crazy when you touch them. The sensation that you touching them just makes them go off. They sweat, they drool out their mouth. Like, I don't want to go through no shit like that. So I'm, I'm here to tell y'all, ecstasy ain't shit to play with. I don't give a fuck if you pop the pill in half. It's still going to have the effects, but it's just half. You know, it's not going to last Can as long. Can turn it off? If any, oh, it's got too cold? Yes. Oh, my God. No need to be too hot. It's yes. too cold. Freezer. Thank you. <laughs> so, you know, so my thing is, it's, it's not, I don't, I don't feel no type of way about with Rick Ross put in the lyrics because and on the same song I got a 45 millimeter don't nobody know I got it you don't know it and I but you will know it when I start popping it like shit like that y'all not even worrying about but y'all worrying about is is Rick Ross making it okay to date rape anybody no it's not good to rape anybody no it's not good to have sex with anybody against their will or if they did not consent to it if they did not consent to it then you rape the person so, no, it's not good, and I don't believe that Rick Ross is, you know, sending that message out there to date rape people. Just like rappers ain't going around saying it's okay to go ahead and shoot somebody or rob them or do something if they get crazy. But you do have lyrics that are controversial, and some people do take it to the head like they really believe that these rappers be doing something to shit. And some of them do be having guns on their tour bus or whatever. But I don't think these, most of these rappers not that hard to go out and start shooting people. Because how many of them have records? How many of them has been to jail? Not a lot of them. For murder. Okay? They talk a good game. But they're not really serious about that shit. And I think people just need to, to grow up. Like, stop. You can't blame a rapper. Don't blame a rapper for what he say in his lyrics for something somebody goes out and do. You can't do that. Do Beyonce blame you for putting your freaking dress on when your man act wrong? Do you blame her for that? No, you do not. 
Well, I was just about to bring her up. I was about to say, what you just said is basically what I was said. I don't think Beyonce meant literally bow down to me, but people were making, oh, Jesus, I really bow down to Jesus. Like, people just go off, off the rocker. Like, ah. Beyonce didn't mean literally bow down to her people, but, oh, I only bow down to Jesus, but some of them praying to the inside of a church in the past three fucking years. But yet they're bowing down to Jesus. When the last time you opened up a Bible? Get out of my face. But I agree with yeah. you. It's not cool for Rick Ross to say, I mean, it's not cool at all for anybody to be date raping anybody. No. It's not cool at all. And I honestly don't believe that Rick Ross <laughs> meant, it, meant that. But I will say this, that when artists say things like that, you got to be a little bit more responsible and you got to be a little bit more careful because then people listen to things like that. Let me say something. Think about it. Think about it. Because I was taught this a long time ago. And I had to actually tell one of my managers this recently. Oh, God. <laughs> you and these managers. Because okay, they don't seem to learn. There is a cause and effect. Mm -hmm. Okay? <laughs> There's a cause and effect. Trinidad James, when he came out with that song, Papa Molly, I'm Sweating. I'm sure he did not think that that song would have the effect on society, on young society, as it does today. But people actually go out there and pop a molly. Okay. Why? Because Trinidad Trin Saint James said mm -hmm. it's okay to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay? I gotta get better. Now, when you think about it, that's the cause and effect. Mm -hmm. Okay? He said it, people went out there and did it. Rick Ross. No, I don't believe Rick Ross meant is meaning for people to go out there and date rape somebody. Put what do you say? I said I put um I put a, a Molly in her champagne. She mind you, even know it. Mind you. Now, but you got a lot of young guys out here who are immature. They post videos of them gang having gang banging these young stupid girls <laughs> on the internet and things like that. Let me tell you something. These two football players uh in the stupid news, I can't hear. Yeah, they just got you know charged as adults for raping that girl who was. Under the influence, she didn't know no better, this and the third. I believe that they were guilty anyway. Yeah, yeah, I definitely believe they were guilty. They were definitely guilty because they knew what they were doing. Um, but people do stuff like that. People will then listen to those type of lyrics and put them, and then slip a molly in somebody's drink. Don't say it won't happen because people do Who stuff the fuck like wants that. Who to have sex with an unresponsive body? I, I, I Come on, Kevin. I'm Kevin, just saying. Kevin, Kevin, don't be naive. Oh no, I'm just saying. Oh, okay. I'm just saying. No, I'm just saying. Okay, because I'm like, girl, I'm saying this. I would do it. People do it all the oh, time. Oh, I know. They do it. They have sex their body. Guys, yes, guys, and a group girl. of guys. If they see a chick that they know they can't get and they want, somebody will slip a Molly in her drink and wait until she goes off into Oz, the wonderful land of Oz, and they get her home and record it and rape her and don't think anything mm -hmm. of it. They do that. I don't think that that's what Rick Ross really wants you to do, but you got to be careful what you put out there because people will do it. Mm -hmm. They will do it. You would have never thought people would actually pop a Molly. I didn't even know a Molly was. I didn't know if it was real. Well, and so, the fan off. Like... So you definitely have to be careful of what it is that you put out there because people will do it. And sometimes you need to be careful of what you drink because you can black out. Now, I blacked out twice in my life, okay? Those ain't fun things because when you wake up the next day, you like, bitch, how did I get here? And what did I do? And who did I curse out? And I know I, cur I could curse a bitch out. And, and and when I woke up, I said, who did I curse out? Then I had to call and apologize. So y'all, you just gotta be careful. When you drink, bitch, cover your drink to make sure ain't nobody dropping anything in there because you just never know who might want you or want to do something Who's to you. Who's you? Yeah, just, you know, it's a lot of precautions you just gotta take. Yeah. Bitch, you don't need no drink. I don't. No. Every time I go to the bar and they say, I say, give me a drink. You know what? I'm gonna just get this bitch a water with lemon, okay? <laughs> when we went to that 7 event, you know that guy didn't charge me for those two sodas. Oh, no, no. Said, no, no, everything was free. No. It's okay, everything. Okay, oh. mind you, it was free food and free drinks. <laughs> oh. And 30 people came, mind you. You know what? It's, I don't know. But shout out to 7. Shout out to 7. All right, let's get to the next subject. Portia versus Cordell Stewart. Mind you, Cordell's filed for, uh, I'll say child support. Cordell filed for divorce court. What you call it? He's filed, filed for a divorce on March 22nd, which was this past Friday. And you know what? Come out, come to find out yesterday, he didn't even tell Portia that he, that he was getting a divorce. Now that is some fucked up That's shit. And that makes man. you a pussy. He's a bitch. Yeah. His head is the shape of a brick. Yes. 
You know, it's like, it's sad. Mm -hmm. and, and this is my whole opinion on Cordell and Portia. Let me tell you all this. Women, to all our female subscribers, you are worth more than just being a damn housewife and a man dressing you up and putting him in what you want to be. A man or what he wants you to be. Yeah. You're more than a, a trophy. You're worth more than that. Today's women do not just sit at home and shop online all day and make sure the house is clean. Today's woman is getting out there and getting a fucking job or going to school, getting her degree, working, having children, and then coming back home. And if you got enough money, y'all got a motherfucking nanny to help with, the, you know, things around the house. It's not just the man providing these days. What Cordell is doing is trying to put his woman or put Portia in, this, this is my house. Don't bring nobody to my house. You can't do this. I don't want you here. I don't want you there. No, you can't have a career. No, you can't have this. And then when that bitch leave you and you done been with all them years, he's leaving you with absolutely nothing. Nothing. So now he's looking like how I'm going to get out there and, you know, I'm just so used to him doing all of this for me and doing this for that. No, bitch. Get out there and get your own. Mm. If you not even match up somewhere with whoever you're dating with or like, I say don't do it. Don't do it. Not unless... You get that prenup, and he agrees to help help you if you want to just agree to that because you don't you don't have to do that. And, and Portia, like she don't even have a mind of her own. Like from from what I'm seeing from the show, she can't do anything without consulting with Cordell. And that's a fucked up way to be living. When you when you when you uh when you gotta consult with your spouse, you make decisions like how many children we're gonna have, and that's before you tie the knot. Where we're gonna live at, or if we can get a new home, can we get a new car, or I'm thinking about taking this job. Those are some of the things that you you know, decide but when you're in the marriage. You don't sit there and say, Oh well, I don't think I could go to this strip club because my husband might say something. Fuck that. Most men want their women to go to the strip club, have a good time. And then when they come home, fuck you. You know, fuck you the way you, you know, seen or, you know, you've been turned on by what you've seen. And some women allow their husbands to go out and do the same thing. You know, I just... Women these days, y'all have to be strong. And men too, because some men fall into that category too. Where they just let their man do whatever or let the woman do whatever. Don't do that because you don't want to end up with nothing. Now Cordell's saying... Girl, I, I don't want to leave you with shit. You're able to get out there and work. Oh, she is able to get out there and work, but when she wanted to, you didn't want her to. And how do we know? We've seen it on the show. You got you to gotta choose. Either you going to want a career or you're going to be my wife. Mm. What kind of shit is that? That's something you should have asked her before you put a ring on her finger. And, and, and I hope she do find a good lawyer so she can walk away with something. They said that she's got, she's, I just read on the YBF that she's just gotten... Michael Jordan's ex-wife's Oh, I know. Girl. <laughs> you know why Nina Jordan got the millions and that was millions. One of the okay. biggest, like hundreds of millions of dollars. Okay, why Nina Jordan said, <laughs> not so fast. Girl, she all these okay. years of parading around with these other women okay. and making babies on the side. Okay. And mind you, Michael just... Um, pay the girl, well, allegedly paid the girl off to go have a seat because now, you know, she was saying that Michael Jordan is the father of her child, child and then she threw the case out. She ain't just throw it out just like that because no. the court had already said, no, Michael, we ain't throwing this out. We're going to make sure that you're the father of this child. She, or Portia Stewart, retained same lawyer as Michael Jordan's alleged baby's, baby's mom. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, well, maybe it's not Juanita Jordan's uh, lawyer. Maybe uh, it's baby mama's lawyer. Sure. Well, who, who else got money from Michael? Michael Jordan. Mm. But Cordell, you know what, Cordell? I just, I don't know. Portia Stewart will be, she'll be She's just gonna be fine. fine. She'll be just fine. She needs to do, I, I watched Wendy Williams today on my day off, and I actually watched Wendy, and Wendy made a lot of sense. Portia Stewart needs to do exactly what Wendy said. Sign on for at least another two or three more seasons of Housewives of Atlanta. Collect those checks. Get yourself a nice apartment somewhere. Mm -hmm. One bedroom, you ain't got to get no big old house. Get a nice, beautiful you bedroom. You, yeah, you, this is you. So get a nice, beautiful apartment. All that shit that Cordell ever gave you or got for you, leave that at his house. Why? Because if you don't, he's going to think, oh, you really did need me because you take a... Uh-uh. Show him, Portia, I don't need nothing in yours. I don't need <laughs> jack from you. You can have all that shit. That is such a bitch-ass move. Yes, you go is. into bed Thursday night... 
Now, you and Cordell, they may have been arguing, you know, that week or whatever. They may have been, because married couples argue. But going to bed Thursday night and waking up Friday morning, not knowing that your husband is going to leave out of the house and drive to some courthouse or whatever and file papers for divorce. And then come home and don't even tell me they did it. Mm, you got to find out on the internet. And you have to find out on the she, That shows you the type of lady she is. I'm talking about Cordell. Not Miss Cordell. Yes, okay. You know, because allegedly it's been he's been gay for a long time. And allegedly he was caught sucking dick in the park. In Pittsburgh. And when he did had, you hear these stories? Oh, you never heard that? No. When he was on the, with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. But Kyle, that I is so old. Yeah, but I don't, yeah, I don't get stuff like that. Yes, 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 yes. You know? I'm one of those people that, if I don't, I'm one of those people, if I don't see yeah. it for myself, I don't believe it. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. No, I'm not, not saying, uh, but I'm just saying. Girl, sometimes because, you know, not see it. No, no, but I mean, I think with a lot of people, I mean, people have been saying a lot of sports stars have been gay for a long time, but yeah, they, it's just rumors. Out yeah, there. it's always going to be rumors because no male sports star is going so, to just come out like that because he got a space. Well, that's not true because what's that football player that, that's, that's not a lot. You, yeah. you, when, you, when you think about it, average, on average, it's about a thousand no, but you said, no, 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 you said no. You said no sports star, but there are what, sports what, stars. How about, yeah, a lot of, let's say majority of them Majority, ninety five percent of yes. them don't come out. Yeah, well then not? you got a small five percent that do. Yeah, and then, but you do have some that do say yes, I'm for gay marriage, but they they're not gay. But I'm just saying, majority are not going to do it because on teammates, you know, you got the immature teammates. They mm -hmm. want to call you gay, call you faggots, call you this, or call they you don't that. Play with yeah, you. yeah, I don't want him looking at me because you know they get naked, they get bump on naked shit. Sometimes you be watching it on TV and they in the background naked. Sometimes if the camera get them on a good angle, you know, so. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, I have seen it. <laughs> I have seen it. I mean, you just got a little excited. Yes, okay. Did I, did, did I get excited last night when I seen the game? I said, oh, my God, all that chocolate on that bed, you didn't see that scene? No, I, didn't, I don't watch Oh, that. oh. But well, a new guy that was on the game. That was on Wendy Williams? Yes. The one okay. that Wendy Williams Mind you. Hi. <laughs> and then yes. she turned around and went. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that one. Mind you, they had a scene with this motherfucker. The, um, Lauren Linda walks in the room and he's laying spread out on the bed. But his hands right here, cause uh, what you call him is in the background, and I mean it was beautiful, a beautiful body, black, nice. Did you get you know? turned on? No, I didn't get turned on, but damn it, I was excited. Like God damn, you know. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> listen, 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 no, it's a beautiful. When you see a beautiful body like that's that, true. that's true. Oh my God, like yeah, cause when I look at my body in the mirror, I go God damn. <laughs> like, Girl, where did this life. come from? Get your life. life. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. They love it. No, but somebody like who? They better? Shit. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> who's that other? Who's my favorite? Makai Brooks. Oh, my. Wait. God. Let's stick to the subject. No, I'm just I'm just I'm just <laughs> don't. Don't. Go there. <laughs> okay. Makai oh, Brooks. Okay. When you perform in those Calvin Klein boxes. No, the brief. I'm I'm sweating. <laughs> Pop the mile, I'm sweating. Woo! <laughs> Girl, I'm sweating. Well, no, what were we talking about? What was I talking about? Somebody about, oh, Portia Stewart. Oh, Portia Stewart. I'm going to be a good guy. Portia, look, girl, look. You just need to let black people know that yeah, you are Yeah, and hopefully you was putting money in your sister's bank account to save on the side. Hopefully you had money in your sister's bank account. Yeah, and hopefully you was putting money in your sister's bank account to save on the side. Hopefully you had money somewhere, child. Somewhere. But Portia, you're going to be all right. I hope Bravo don't fire her because now she got a good storyline. Because at first, like, I have the perfect life. Yeah. Now, look at it a year later. See, that's why I think reality shows sometimes break couples up. It's an ego thing. Maybe he didn't want Portia to be known because nobody uh -huh. knew who Portia yeah. the fuck was. Well, that was before the show. Okay. And now he's like, and oh, now, now. He's get, now she's getting the more, yeah. more attention than him. And I'm pretty sure people are asking her to come to their parties and stuff. Hey, and, hey. and that's more money. And you don't want his wife out there. So now it's probably bothering his ego a little bit that now she's making some money coming in from somewhere. Because what other reason is he divorcing her for? No. I mean, she's I'm not out there fucking. Either. She's not doing drugs. She's just... A thing back. Well, first sometimes. of all, we all knew he. See, if, if Cordell didn't show us the asshole that he really was on the show, then we would never know the reason for them divorcing. Mm -hmm. But when you see clips of him saying, "You got to choose whether you want to have a career or a family," did you like? Why she can't? Why, why can't, can't she have both? both? Why can't she have the babies, raise them until they're two or whatever, and then go out there and start a career? Why does she have to? Why would any husband tell their wife that you have to choose? And did you know his baby mom is friends with Sheree? The girl that be coming on, that used to come on the Housewives, 
I forgot her name, but she was like the other uh, muscle, muscle girl. And I thought that was Sheree's girlfriend. You know what I'm talking about. I know exactly. Yeah. And when they, they got a baby to, uh, together. Isn't yeah. that the one who Sheree brought with her when they went to uh, Kim's rich friend house and they was all trying to figure out why Sheree had, when Nene and Kim was arguing on the bus when they was driving to that man's house? Mm -hmm. to Miami it was? Yeah. Remember? And then when they got there, it was supposed to be the girls' trip, but then when they got there, Sheree had a friend and they was wait, like, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, 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 Sheree's friend is a girl. I think they probably. She's been on like some episodes a couple of years ago, but she was always like there with Sheree. Because cause it was a time when Nene friend used to be in there, Diana, mm -hmm. and then Sheree had her friend, and that was the girl. But whatever the case, that's his baby mom. So I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know what kind of. You know what? I'm not. I'm just shut your mouth. Don't say that. Yeah, you know what these kids do with these kids, man. Yeah. Yeah. Gays having kids. I mean, gays having kids. You know what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm. Pat Houston. You can tell me yes, you know you know they don't like us um, sidebarring on, on the scripting show. I hope they turn their volume up. <laughs> so, Pat Houston had a suicide skit the other day or yesterday. What? Child, look, I can't get you verbatim, but Pat Houston put something on her damn Facebook where she was like, "Child, blah 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 blah. Let me go just lay down because I'm tired." Life is, she was talking about what life is like, and then she's like, I'm tired, let me go lay down for, I need to go get some rest. Finally get some rest. Then all of a sudden, you know, they had the ambulance coming to her house and everything. Oh so, you know, when you post something like that on Facebook, and then you got the ambulance coming to your house. And then you're related to Whitney Houston. Yes, people want to think something. Mm -hmm. So, people took that post, and she, you know, they said, oh, damn, she tried to kill herself. So, she talked to the, um, Kevin Frazier from e Entertainment Tonight and told him that, you know, she would never, you know, kill herself. And it was a big misunderstanding. And that she was working out with her daughter and she hurt her back. And, you know, that's why she went to the hospital. That was her excuse. But for me, it's just so ironic when you put on your Facebook about how challenging life is and all of this you're going through. And how you need rest and you want to take your rest and the cops is at your house. The ambulance is at your door. So, you know, I just want to pat. What was that? Oh, I got good ears. I heard it too. That's me. <laughs> so, you know, Pat, I just really want you to get it together. Um, I, I don't want you to bring that show back. I want y'all to really get Bobby Christina some help. I don't I don't know who who y'all could get, but Bobby Christina definitely needs the help and she you know, I just don't I just don't want to see her out there like that no more. I think Y'all really, y'all need to reevaluate everything that's going on with y'all life. And then your cousin Dion Warwick, I mean, yeah, Dion Warwick is going through a bankrupt situation. You know, she owes ten million, ten million dollars to the IRS. <laughs> How do they let it get that high before they say, Dion fucking Warwick, bitch, you owe us ten million dollars? Where is ten? Where is Dion Warwick gonna get ten yes. million dollars? I want everybody in the music industry to help Dion out, because that's a damn legend. And you know what they do? They're going to call Rita, and she's going to say, who? Got money. She's just trying to get rid of them old bills. <laughs> 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 
Talking about, okay, they went head bills back to the 90s. Okay. No, she's just filed for bankruptcy. She's all right. Ten she's just trying to get million. rid of the old bills. No. Okay. Ten million. Ten million. And then she was only, after all her monthly expenses, she's only getting ten million, I mean ten dollars. Now look, <laughs> no God. My ten fucking dollars. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Go on. Wait a minute. Ten dollars from who? And for that, what? Because she got, she's getting like $20,000. No. How much she making? Wait a minute. Dionne yeah. Warwick is 70 years old. Oh, yeah. She got a social security check coming in. And, she's, and getting, she's, getting, she's getting money on the regular. I don't know if she's doing shows or whatever. Yeah. But she's getting money coming in. Yeah, she got money, money coming, coming in. Because I'm sure her expenses are so much that she's only left with $10. Now, look, Dion, I love you and everything. You know, I went over to you a year ago. But look. Why the fuck are you paying four thousand dollars for a personal assistant and five thousand dollars for housekeeping? Well, Ain't that much clear in the world for a seven-year-old woman? Okay, who lives the fuck alone? Now, mind now, now if you live like Mom Scorpion, and take care of everybody. Okay, that'd be a different story. Okay, but you're not. Oh, I think we're not. You're not. But that's too much. That's twenty thousand dollars. Look, no, excuse me. Five, no wonder why nine. she's in debt. That's a hundred thousand dollars a ball, year. Uh, Four thousand dollars for an assistant. Yes. What is she assisting her in? Okay. Medicaid? I don't even see how Dion how they like that. What? But what show? Last time I seen Dion work on TV, when she said, "I'm broadening my shoulders for others to stand on." That's the last time I seen Dion in public. That's so on uh, uh, in November. That at the uh, and Mighty Dion taped in October. So, what are you doing, Dion? Like. You got that much monthly expense? Girl, let me tell you something. You know what you do? You take your ass to Vegas mm -hmm. and go out there and perform. And mm -hmm. perform six nights a week. Mm -hmm. You could do that. Mm -hmm. if, if fucking Gladys Knight is out there, you could go out there and do a show. Do, do it at a hotel. Or do a weekly engagement or something to see. If you get the girls to come, can you get a, I a contract? And I will go. So I do see. you know the way to say okay, those things? Dion, Dion will be up on that before I put on my makeup, <laughs> I say a little prayer for you, forever and ever. Yes, yeah, Dion, you better talk singing. You better get you know, her and Whitney are good for talk singers. <laughs> well, Whitney was you know. Okay, no, Dion, once you got to a certain age, start smoking on Virginia Slims. Oh, forever sure. and ever. Yes, Dion, you better. Yes, she better, she better get out there or something. What? Ten million dollars. Yeah. Where is Dion Warwick gonna get ten million dollars? <laughs> and she, you know, I'm not, no, I'm not gonna go there. Don't go there. But, 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 but Dion, you're gonna be all right. We all know you're gonna she be needs all to right. Fire her assistant. Yeah, give her, the, give her the fire get, her yeah, house. Look back her. at what you're spending your money on the month. Okay. Yeah, get a nice little apartment. So get out of New York or get a nice little. Apartment. Where does she live? I don't even know. And Sissy said, no, you can't come over here. Okay, yeah, her and Sissy can live together. No, they can't. Why not? And Sissy said, no, no, no. Sissy's one of those old women that I don't have no company after eight. <laughs> and don't call me yeah, after seven. And don't call me after seven. I'm in here reading my Bible. You doing what? Look at, look. <laughs> Can't tell Dion nothing. nothing. But yet she's owing it. Look at her. Look at her. And this was recently, okay? Look at Dion. Look at her. Stands at posing. But yet she owes the IRS $10 million. You can't tell her not a thing. Sure. Dion. But Dion, we're going we gonna to pray for you, you know? We're going to say a little prayer for you. I say a little prayer for you. Now let's talk Dion. about Let's talk about these airlines, okay? Now, now, see, the airline industry is getting good. very petty. Uh -huh. First of all, it used to be free for your luggage to get on the plane. Now these girls want to find, make more money by charging you $25. Now they're making all these millions of dollars, you know, charging us for that. Now they want to, now they charge you, if you want to pick your own seat, because a bitch like me always got to get a window seat. They charge me $6, so that's 12 because I'm going round trip, to pick a seat. So that's extra money for them. Now, some company... It's trying to propose that airlines in America charge people based on their weight for a seat on a plane. Now, this is something that should, because of fuel prices and it's adding too much weight to the plane. What? That's some bullshit. What? Y'all making too, too many excuses 
you know, to make extra money on flying on a plane. First of all, it's too fucking high to be on a plane, especially when I had to spend three hundred something dollars when to fly to Atlanta when I normally pay one hundred and fifty dollars. That's just too much money that y'all charge people to, to be in the air for only for an hour and a half. I, I'm still not getting that. And then, you know, then, then the plane's so fancy now. These bitches like, oh, we don't want your cash. We only want your card. If you want a fucking sandwich or a juice or a coffee or whatever. They don't take cash. Yeah, they don't take cash. They, they want your credit card. card. Yeah, sure do. And yeah. it better be over a certain amount. Okay. <laughs> like, by the like, time you get on the plane, you won't have nothing else on that card. Because before you get on the plane, you're paying for to check in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? You're paying for this. You're paying for that. You got to even pay to stand in the security line. Don't be fancy and do curbside check in. Then you got to pay extra. I will never pay for curbside check in. Ain't that serious? I walk my ass in the machine and keep it on moving. Okay. Go upstairs and do that. Like it's it's gonna it's like the, the airline industry is doing too much. And then something we haven't even talked about. Why are they making it okay for pocket knives to be on planes? Oh, thank you, glory. Because I I, I, I I just don't I don't understand oh. that. Oh my God! Did they not learn anything from September 11th? Yeah, it should be nothing, no sharp objects at all on a fucking plane. For what? Okay. Well, I've never seen anybody use a knife on a plane. And for what? And what do you need it? First, first, go off. Go off, Sister McClendon. Do it. <laughs> first of all, first of all, okay, why do you need a pocket knife on a plane? Same, Ooh, don't break your phone. Just like, why do you need a box cutter on a plane? Mm -hmm. On September 11th, 2001, for those of you that were living under a rock on that particular day, 19 hijackers hijacked four American planes in this country. They hijacked those four American planes with pepper spray and box cutters. A box cutter is not even but that big, okay? It's not that big. But yet, they were able to slice people's necks on that plane to show those other people on those planes that we mean business, okay? Mm -hmm. If they can hijack a plane with a box cutter that is not that large, what makes you think somebody's not going to try to hijack a plane with a pocket knife? Mm -hmm. What planet are these people... I don't Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not finished. They will allow you to get on a plane with a pocket knife. But just a few months ago, they had to strip search a 90-year-old woman because they didn't know what was going on in her adult depends. <laughs> what is it? The woman humiliated. felt humiliated and her daughter. And the sad thing about it is that the woman, the 90-year-old woman, she... They made her, they took her in the back and stripped her. Stripped her, yeah. Her, her daughter should have sued. I'm not for sure she sued, but she should have sued. And then the, then the, then the FA, the, the transportation, what, the, the security people, whatever the hell they're called. TSA. Tried to, yeah, TSA. They tried to justify what they did. This is a 90-year-old woman. What the f is she going to do? How fast can she move? I mean, I just... <laughs> For the life of me, I don't understand. But yet, you're allowing somebody like me and somebody like Kevin and somebody who's able to go on a plane with a pocket knife? Are you crazy? And then, how about this? Right here in Philadelphia last week. Oh yeah, This man on stepped on a plane. As a pilot. As a pilot. Mind you, mind you. This is a man who, what was it? He, he didn't feel like... What is it? He didn't feel like waiting or paying or whatever. Remember. He got in the airport, okay? He went to Party City and got him a pilot's costume, okay? I'm joking about Party City. I don't know where he got this pilot's costume at. But he got a pilot's costume. He walked in the airport, got on a, yes, I'm going to let you know which airline it was, a U.S. Airways plane mm -hmm. from Philadelphia to what, France? Because he was a French man. Yeah, was going to France. He was a French man. Got on this plane. Got in a seat on the plane. Mind you, security and the flight attendants who were checking the tickets let him on the plane. He got on that plane and sat in a seat. And then decided, oh no, I don't want to sit here. I want to sit up in the cockpit. And made his way to the cop. Mind you, this man is not a pilot. He's just a regular man. How was he even able to get on the plane? I don't even know. What the fuck is going on? 
on in this world. Mm -hmm. That man could have had a pocket knife, held those people hostage, took off in that plane and crashed that plane somewhere. What the fuck? I, I don't and yet it. people are worrying about Beyonce singing bow down bitches when you got <laughs> airlines allowing people to get on a plane with no type of ID, no type of credentials, no nothing. And now they are allowing us to get on a plane with a pocket knife and y'all screaming about a bow down? No. We need to be going up. You just never something. know. People might just be crazy enough to start stabbing people on a plane. On a plane. Just stabbing people. Yeah, just to stab because they're mad at life. Just because they they're mad at school, life. If they could do it at school, they could do it on a the plane. They could do it anywhere. Child. How about that How about that pilot last year? Who was the drunk pilot? No, the one who was going crazy. Talking about they going to crash. And oh, pilot. yes, yes. Yeah. He, uh, he lost it. He like, really lost it. Hello. Like, you know what? I'm going to talk about I'm not I think all anymore. pilots should be evaluated too. Yeah, every six months. You, you pilots and flight yeah, attendants. You, you, you're on the plane. Yep, every six months. I, this is a, this is how I look at life. Every six months, pilots and flight attendants should be evaluated. Every six months, anybody over the age of seventy-five who drives should be evaluated. Their driver's license. They need. They need to. Or not every six months. Maybe every two years or something like that. Maybe something like that. Maybe Anybody year, over here? Maybe once a year. After the age, over the age of seventy-five, you know, because you you got people out here who still drive like and just good. recently that a one hundred year old man who ran over those poor kids. You know, Ooh, no. that, that, thank God nobody up. got killed. But I mean, Ooh. he couldn't stop. His car started something. He couldn't stop. A hundred years old, and he you know he hit some school kids. Thank God nobody was killed. But when you, when they interviewed him, mind you, he was a black guy. He looked good as shit. Even the reporter couldn't believe it. He said, how old are you? He said, I'm 100 years old. And the guy said 100. And then he said his birthday. He said, I think it was like November something, 19, uh, 1911 or 1912. I said, get your life. Get your life. <laughs> and I mean, he looks good. It's on YouTube. I said, oh, my God. But the thing is, I don't, I'm not, I'm not against, because, you know, some people think that elderly people shouldn't drive. I'm not one of those people. I think that as long as you got your limbs and your mind is right and your eyesight is fine, you go ahead and drive. Go ahead and drive. But I think that you should be evaluated every so often to make sure you are still functioning. Functional, yeah. How dare these people allow these people to get on the plane with no... Yes, it was. Somebody said it should have got fired for that somebody, one that conflict. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I hope somebody he got fired. He sat in the passenger plane and said, oh, no, yeah, and they this is the, comfortable for me. I need to go up front. They said the uh, pilot, the um, the co-pilot was realized there was too many people in the cockpit. That's how he so, noticed. So that means he was in the cockpit. Because you know when you get bored the plane, the cockpit door is already open. Mm-hmm. So the co-pilot said, oh, yeah, he re that's when the co-pilot realized something wasn't right when the guy actually sat down in the cockpit, took his jacket off and sat down. Mm -hmm. The co-pilot said, wait a minute, what's going on? But I hope that man, was, was he drunk or something? Or he just... No, that man got, that man did not, that man felt as though he's going to go home first class. Mm -hmm. He's not going to go home first class, he's going to go home first, first class. Mm -hmm. Okay? But well, I know he got arrested and probably being detained. He did. He was an old, they showed his picture on the news, an old disheveled French white man. His hair all messy and everything. He was over it. He said, no, I'm going back to France. <laughs> hey, let It's a mess. It's a mess. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to Aunt Viv. What is Aunt Viv's real name? Cause I Janet Huber. Yeah, Janet Huber. Oh, she might read us now. Okay. Some of y'all might agree with me, and some of y'all might not. Now, at first, I, I got caught up in the, yes, you better read, Janet. Mm -hmm. You better read Wendy and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, but then when I really thought about it and I, and I, and I looked at it, I said, okay, she did the blog, she did the, the blog talk radio. And then I go into Nicole Bitchy the next day, and I seen that she actually wrote a letter to Wendy Williams. She did. And then I said. Because she read the letter on the show, on that show that I listened oh, to. Oh, she was reading she, the letter. That's what she was reading the letter that she wrote oh. to Wendy, which it was very immature. Yes. It was just stupid. And she didn't really read Wendy Williams. It was just, she was trying, she was throwing jabs at Wendy Williams. But my thing is, I'm sorry to cut you off. But my thing is Janet Huber. We all know how Wendy Williams is. This is no shock that Wendy Williams was pressing people for information. Mm -hmm. I agree. I do agree with you. Wendy Williams, what happened to Aunt Viv, the original Aunt Viv on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, damn near 20 years ago is old fucking news. There's no reason why you should still be bringing that up in 2013 when Fresh Prince of Bel-Air has been off the air since 96 or 97. Why are we still bringing up 
why she or how she got fired or how people felt. Who cares? Move on. That happened when Bill Clinton was president his first damn term before Monica Lewinsky even happened. <laughs> so why are we worrying about something that like that? Something so stupid like that. Mm -hmm. But Janet, this is Wendy fucking Williams. You threw all this shade at Wendy Williams in that letter saying that, oh, she looks like a man and her breasts may not be real and she's not for women and all that type of stuff. But Janet, at the end of the day, you yourself even admitted that you were actually watching the show, okay? You were watching the show because you claimed that you were watching the show because you wanted to see Tatiana Ali on there. But girl, if she I if I know what I know, you're a regular. You're a regular on the one. You watch the Wendy Williams show very often. You watch the Wendy Williams show to see what's being said and see who's going to be on there and to see what Wendy Williams has to say so then you can just nitpick Go about on. what Wendy Go is on. saying. So you saying that, oh, you only watch Wendy Williams because Tatiana Ali's on there was a fucking lie. Because let me ask you, I'm going to, no shade to Tatiana Ali, but who the fuck was promoting the fact that she's going to be on Wendy Williams? Uh, I'll wait. Because I don't think anybody was excited to see her on Wendy Williams. Not like she was Beyonce or Rihanna or Mary J. Blige on Wendy Williams. It was Tatiana Ali. I'm sure it wasn't that many people talking about her being on that show. You were watching because you're a regular on the show and you probably saw a few days before in a commercial that she's going to be in there. She said, like, okay, I, I'm going to watch her when she's on there. Mm -hmm. Then Wendy brought up the whole thing with First Prince and then you got all in your feelings. Oh, I can't believe she said that. Then you put out your pen and piece of paper and you wrote the stupid, dumb, irresponsible, illiterate childish letter. You you didn't stick to the facts at all. You went to this whole, oh, how Wendy, people say that Wendy Williams is a man and how she, Janet Huber, get over it, okay? Wendy Williams is a gossip columnist. This is what she does. I'm not a big fan of Wendy Williams. I don't like a lot of things that she does my damn self. But Janet, let's keep it real. Let's keep it all the way real. Had Wendy Williams not mentioned your name in that interview, nobody would be talking about you, okay? So for this past week, people have been talking about you. Why? Because Wendy Williams brought some attention to you. But let's keep it all the way real. After next week, nobody's not going to be talking to you about you no more because nobody really cares to know what it is that you're doing. Why? Because you have been off the scene since 95 or 94 or whenever you left Fresh Prince. Nobody cares anymore. Nobody cares. Yes, Wendy was wrong for bringing it up, but Janet, you just, you made yourself look more stupid than you made Wendy look stupid because that letter was stupid. And I'm glad that Wendy didn't mention it. Did she mention it on the yes, show? Definitely. I'm glad she never talked about it because you just made yourself look like a fool. And I'm sure you wanted her to bring it up because, I, like I said, I know you are an avid watcher of her show. Because, again, no shade to Tatiana Lee, but who the fuck cares if she's going to be on Wendy Williams? Nobody. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I don't care. So, that's, you were watching the show. You always watch the show to nitpick to see what Wendy Williams was going to say. <laughs> and now, you know, like, come on, Janet Hubert. Like, <clears throat> get over yourself, okay? Get over yourself. Well, that's the gospel, you know? And I want y'all to look to your neighbor and then say, he read that. He read that. He read that. <laughs> and then look to your another neighbor and say, didn't he? <laughs> didn't he? <laughs> wow. Yes! You know... Well, I don't have to say anything because she already went there, you know? Okay. You know, it's already been proven. And I was so over it when people were sending me, oh, Janet Huber went off. She read Wendy. <laughs> I, I, I said, no, she did not read Wendy, okay? Uh, if anything, Wendy read her without saying a damn damn, <laughs> uh, without saying a damn thing. Not even talking about it. Okay, her. like, Janet, uh, please, 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 please. <laughs> okay? Please. Mm -mm -mm. So, yeah, did you watch Married to Medicine? I only... I can't really talk about the show only because when I was watching it, I was on the phone. So you know how you're watching something but you're not really paying attention to it. So yeah. no, I didn't watch it. Let me tell you, okay. Right. This is so right. good that Tamar is on another show, child. Shout out to Mariah Huck <laughs> because you know what, Mariah Huck, she is the uh, creator. Did you post something on Instagram? Not yet. I'm on. Can I see? Can I approve that picture first? No, don't, don't. Oh, don't. oh, yeah, that's, that's a mess. mess. This bitch going on. Please don't post that. You're not supposed to look good when you're going on. Oh, but that looks a mess. Oh, 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 so you want to be Yvette uh, ch channeling all the bitches? No, now? I want to be uh, Michelle I'm, Williams. Oh, Michelle. Sure. <laughs> oh, okay. She's like, baby, sure. Okay, because if she can do it, I can do it too. Mm -mm. Don't post that on there. I don't approve of that. I'm going to get it on there. Thank you. Oh, just, no, put, just post a stitch pic. Don't post that of me. I don't do no just big stitch. Well, then don't post that of me. Don't put me on your thing. Why are you? Because I don't like that picture. Well, Thank would, you. Would you want this one on there? Why would I want that one? <laughs> Come on, let's just talk about the show. No, no, so... Bitch, you going off. Come on. Mm -mm. I can't go Let's down anymore. Oh, wait, go back to that one. 
Okay, we can do that. They ain't, they're not, none of them was bad. Yeah, we can do that one. I like that. If I posted a picture of you, you would have a fit. I don't care. Yes, you would. No, you'd have a fit if I posted a picture of your mother on there. You do it yeah. already. So First I don't of all, care. I've never posted a picture of your mom on my Instagram. You is lying. I talked about your mom on my Instagram. My mom is on your Instagram. No, my, your mother's not on my. Your mother's on, you? on my Instagram when she's standing up with her eyes open. I'm talking about with her eyes shut. But, oh, I didn't say clothes. That yeah, don't matter. Yeah, but she's your mom has there. been in some. But why would you? Real, but why would you post that? Yeah, just like why would you post that? It's <laughs> nothing bad. But it's, it's not bad. If I say don't oh, post, girl, you know what? You know what? We're not going. But I'll let you post that one because no, I like we're that. not even gonna go there over no picture. It's not that okay, serious. Okay, but then come on, let's talk about what you're about to talk about. So yeah. So anyway, Mariah, this is my thing. I'm, I'm glad you started your show and everything, but you cannot be on a show where you're stealing from everybody. Wait. Who's Mariah? Mariah is the head of the, the girls. Her mother, she's she's married the Indian doctor. And she's from... I didn't see it. Was this the other night, the season yeah, premiere? Yeah, the, the season premiere. I didn't get into it. So she she took from Tamar. Oh my gosh, she gave us Tamar all night. And then she was stealing from Andrea Kelly with the check your email. She kept telling everybody, oh, you checked your email, such, 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 such. And then she just reminded me of a... a, a, a a drag queen or a gay man. And what was she doing? You know, I'm tired. You know what? What was she doing to, to remind you of Tamar? Well, you know, people say that about Tamar. Yes, she's here. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to get to that. Because I'm tired of the girls taking from the boys. You know, the girls always taking from the boys. Leave the boys something. All of this, the gay lingo and everything, just be you. Keep it to yourself. You, you, know? hear, you hear that, Tamar? Yes. He's everybody. Like gay lingo is for the gays, okay? The girls... All the, even Nene, yes, honey. All the girls on these reality shows is just taken from all the boys. Leave, uh, let us have something. So anyway, she gave us all of that. It's just like, I, I still don't know who she is. I don't know who she is as a person. Right now she just looks like a party girl that likes to drink and have fun. The other girl fighting with her husband because the husband, she said, he said, if you walk out this door, I'm I'm going to call off this wedding. So he sends a text message to all her friends telling them that the wedding is off. I don't really care about all of that. But what I do care about is if your husband is a psychiatrist, how come he can't help you with your problems and your issues? That should be the main person he should be working on. You shouldn't be going out there acting crazy. Oh, because I'm from here and I'll, I'll beat a bitch down. I'm fighting. Y'all know who I am. Y'all know who I get. Y'all are too fucking old for that. It reminds me of Basketball Wives LA where you got these middle-aged 40-year-old women fighting. For what? For what? What are you fighting for? Fuck this. You know what? Look, I am 28 years old. When I hang out with my friends, if we can have a disagreement, yeah, bitch, we might have an argument, we might have a disagreement. But it ain't got to come to no blows, and it don't come to blows. So what are y'all fighting for? I'm seeing a clip of them fighting. That's not even good. And then y'all making, making the medical profession look a little bit bad. But, you know, a lot of people make black people look bad. So I guess it don't matter what field you're from, you know. So that really don't matter. But then, like, it's like you're parading about, yes, my husband do this, my husband do that, and blah, blah, blah. And he's the top Atlanta thing. Well, bitch, what do you do? This is what I'm talking about with these women that just let their men do everything. And then you're just left with the motherfucking scraps. And if he say, I'm going, then, girl, you fucked up. I don't give a fuck if you have a foundation because you're probably using your husband's money for the foundation. What have you done? What have you done lately? All of these girls fighting, throwing shit, oh, my husband is this. And then the, oh, my God, the white girl, she looks terrible. And, and, I, have a, and I have an issue with Bravo because my thing is, why when this is a predominantly African-American show, you have to throw in the token white girl? No, give us an all-black show. Don't give us a, a Kim. We don't need a Kim, no, because the black people will watch Bravo. Okay, look at look at the ratings for the Real Housewives of Atlanta after Kim left. I'm pretty sure they're still high. They didn't need Kim. Kim's not memorable at all. And she don't need a show on the damn network. And I think it's sad that she got to come on before Candy's show. They got Kim, they got Kim coming on, then Candy coming on after. See, it's this shade all around the board. You know, but I'm just saying, y'all don't need her on the show. But she's there, so I can't get mad at that. But, you know, her husband is on call. That's great. But I just wish it could show more of what goes on with the doctors and how they... 
I don't know. I think it should have been more female doctors than women that's married, married to a medical mm -hmm. doctor. Because if, if you ask me, Dr. Well, the show was called Ma Married, married to Medicine. Medicine. But you know what? But you know what? But let me stop you. Because right. you ain't going to find no female doctors out there who are serious about their profession and going to get on the show like but that. Listen, like fool. But listen, Dr. Jackie, the one that do the, cele the celebrity doctor mm -hmm. that's on the show, she should have her own show where... She's just, you know, working with the celebrities, and I know every celebrity's not going to want their business out there, mm -hmm. but she can have a show where she's just, you know, showing what women go through and what her day is like being a doctor to all of these celebrities. Dr. Jackie need a show on her own, and not with all of these bitter-ass women. Yeah, she could lose fighting. Like yeah, that. yeah, but yeah, but she don't, she, you know, she don't have to explain. She don't have to use. She don't even have to use the celebrities. No, I mean, example. Example. no, no, I don't mean from. Oh, the show. you talking about? I mean the show that she's on yeah, now. Yeah, fighting. Because some celebrities that. may look at that and be like, I don't even want to be associated yeah. with somebody like that. But she she went to Mariah's house and told no Mariah came to her house and then she got Mariah together like y'all shouldn't be fighting like what the are y'all doing? Yeah, yeah I saw like, that. what are y'all yeah. doing? Blah 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 blah. But she don't I, I think that she first of all I've seen her on a lot of shows she should not be on there at all. I don't give a damn how good of a doctor she is. Just branch her off and let her have her own medical show. Should you got you got all of these Doctor Oz, the doctors should get Doctor Jackie her own damn show somewhere. Oprah call her and bring her to the own network, and then you will have a positive black medical woman on your show. Cause I don't think you have real physicians or 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 or, or whatever on your show. I don't think you have Oprah. Maybe I just spoke something. I don't know. But I'm still going to watch Married to Medicine, but I do have my my gripes about that. You know, I do have my little gripes about the show. But otherwise, it's an okay show. You know, I just want some of the black girls to pipe it on down. You know, you're locked up, married in medicine, man. And y'all act like y'all don't have no class. It's like, some, some of these, if, if, you, if you are in a great profession, pick a person that has class. That's not going to embarrass you and your profession. And have people talking bad about you at work or whatever. That's what I say. And the, the girl that was mad that her husband kicked her out, and then he got he did something to her. She don't want nobody to know that he got a record. But you're talking about it on the show. Mm -hmm. Like what fucking sense is That's that? That's what made? I was trying to figure out too. When yeah, and I'm thinking like, didn't they show his mug shot? They yeah. show his mug shot. He did something. He probably put his hands on her, mm -hmm. but she don't want nobody to know. But bitch, you're talking about it on, on the, the show. show. Mind you. <laughs> Mind you, yeah, that didn't make sense to me at all. Yeah. She don't want them to find, she don't want certain women in this group to find out. No. But yet when the show airs, I guess she probably think they're going to sit with the TV on me when that part comes on. Yeah, it's going to it's gonna come out anyway. It's, Mariah is the fucking the head of the show. You don't want her to know. Of course she's going to fucking find out. She's a part of the editing process and all that and decides what goes on the show. So I'm pretty sure she knew. But anyway, y'all, I want to say thank y'all for watching tonight's show. Um... I'm gonna I'm gonna check in with Michelle to make sure I, I know she you know. Did you get the um video back from from the interview? What? Did you get it back? What? The Michelle interview. So oh no no no! I, I taped it on my camera too, oh, so okay. I, I had it too. So it's gonna it should be up this weekend. That should be up this weekend. We will be back. Not now. your okay. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Keep I'm talking. sorry. I'm yeah. You talking about our interview? No no no. Just keep talking. Cause okay. I'm gonna say I'll say it off camera. Okay. So we'll have that up this weekend, and we'll be back next week with a new video for you guys. But I really want you guys to watch that interview with Michelle because it's good. And we talked about so much in that album. We talked about talked about Fela. We talked about her album. We talked about her reality show. We talked about depression. We talked about Jesus, of course. We talked about a whole lot of stuff. So y'all, I hope y'all watch that. And if you did not watch our interview with Gogo Morrow and Bridget Kelly, I want y'all to take time out your day and go over and watch those videos and get to know them. Great so. Video. We'll talk to y'all next week, and y'all enjoy y'all weekend. Peace.